Oh, <clears throat> about uh, uh, this time last year, I found myself in the uh, in the throes of the the started imposter syndrome. Uh, so I uh, went and talked to my advisor about it for seeking some guidance and wisdom. And here's a little paraphrased uh, uh, conversation here. Told him I needed some direction, and he gave me exactly what I needed, which was some research I could feel good about. Uh, he tasked me with being chief scientist on two cruises, wrapping up some work we had done the previous year, and I was really excited about it. Later that day, it went immediately on my CV. <laughs> uh, he wanted me to test out some, uh, a plankton pump where we were going to try to sample eggs from discrete depths, which I was also excited about. I love uh, new science. One little caveat was I didn't have a lot of time to plan the first cruise, which was the following month. Uh, but all, in all seriousness, let's talk about fish eggs for a second. So the general, generally uh, accepted school of thought is if they're floating, they're going to be, most of them are going to be found near the surface. That seems like pretty sound logic with some exponential decrease to depth, also sound logic. But if I've uh, learned anything from my time here at CMS is always question it. And uh, so I'm thinking, what if we're wrong and there's some characteristics, some eggs that cause them to be neutrally buoyant at some different level in the water. So to explore this, we, uh, on those two cruises I mentioned, we went out here right off Tampa Bay, not very deep, uh, about average depth of 15 meters. We did two sets per cruise, a night set and a day set. Now our uh, pump was a gas powered water pump uh, with a long tube attached to it that we lowered down in the water with a length calibrated line and attached to it was an electronic inline flow meter. You see the flow meter there and here's my lovely Im improvised catchment apparatus which was just a plankton net tied to the side of the weather bird. The flow meter is important uh, because it measures the volume of water we're pumping that we use to calculate the catch per unit effort and uh, the equation there. Uh, if you're curious what goes, uh, average uh, thing that goes in the denominator there, it's about 5.8 uh, cubic meters. Uh, if you don't have a mind for metric and imperial, shame on you, but that's about five, uh, 306 five gallon buckets. For the pumping, uh, we did four different depths. Uh, we would, before we start, we'd drop a CTD in to uh, measure the characteristics of the water column. We'd lower our tube in to our desired depth, pump for 15 minutes, and when we're done at that depth, we have to do a lot of stuff up on deck, but what I want you to focus on here is we adjust it up to the next depth. Did it for uh, 15 minutes, carried on at six meters, then went up to three meters and did it for 15 minutes. All that adds up to about an hour if it's 15 minutes, but we did this three times total, so that's three hours per every series. Uh, that doesn't account for all the stuff we were doing on deck in between, so all in all, we ended up doing about five to six hours of work per set. Uh, in between, while we're pumping, I would run into the lab and separate the sample from the seawater with a sieve and then preserve it in uh, alcohol. It's pretty straightforward. Then back on land, I would count all the eggs uh, in microscopy. Now before I get into all the figures and the results from just this part, let's have a little orientation to my figures. Uh, our x-axis across the top is the catch. There's that equation again, just as a reminder. Over on uh, <coughs> our y-axis is just there to kind of illustrate uh, movement through time. So we have the first set up here at the top, and we went deep to shallow. And these callouts to the side are the times of day, not the pumping time. So the, that's 9.03 p.m., not 21 minutes and three seconds of pumping. And we have a uh, color code for the depths there. Move on down to the second set, third set, so forth and so on. Now that we're oriented, we're going to look at the March data. Pretty unremarkable. Seems pretty consistent through the uh, water column uh, abundance of eggs. This is uh, the night set on the, on the left and the day set on the right. Now if we look at the May data, it's, uh, we've got a little more interesting stuff going on here. Uh, I do want to point out that these eggs were not here when we did it the first time, 
and at, during the day set, some eggs disappeared. What's going on here? This could have been several, one of several things. Could have been these were vected in by uh, currents, tile currents or something like that. Uh, also, I'm curious, are, are these the same communities of eggs, species compositions? Um, are they actually anomalies or is this typical? So I went back to Ernst with another paraphrase conversation here and told him it would be really cool if we could do some uh, genetic analysis on these to see if there's a different change in the species composition through time there. And uh, I could do it so Mackenzie doesn't have to do uh, so much more work piled onto her. And his response was, yeah, let's do it. Quick, uh, for DNA barcoding, it's a relatively uh, recent uh, method. It's well developed, even though it's fairly recent in the past, in, let's see, 2003, 16 years. Uh, and it's far, far more accurate than visual IDs of fish eggs. I, don't, I wouldn't believe you if you told me you could tell just by looking at these eggs what species they are. In DNA barcoding, we target a, a cytochrome oxidase uh, 1 gene in mitochondrial, uh, the mitochondrial DNA isolate it and then amplify it with a polymerase chain reaction, which is basically making a lot of copies. Uh, a lot of copies are easier to see than one copy when we use it, uh, gel electrophoresis. Those results we send, send off to be sequenced by someone else, and this is kind of what we get back. That's one fish worth of sequence. And there's this wonderful online resource, a Barcode of Life database, uh, that's kind of like a Google Translate, but way better than Google Translate. <laughs> you plug in your uh, thing there, and this says, oh, that says hogfish. <laughs> Here are some highlighted uh, uh, species from our DNA results. Uh, I'm not going to dive too much into this, other than pointing out that Tom Tate, up here in the top center, was, has been our most abundant so far. Uh, still want to stress that this is incomplete. I'm still coding these eggs. Let's have another orientation real quick. Uh, have our fish names over here on the left. Beside those, we had in parentheses, we have the actual number of sequences that I've got. Uh, same depth color code, except we're kind of looking at, you know, this is Tom Tate at 12, 9, 6, 3. Now that I've taken all that time to uh, get us oriented, I'm going to say once again, this seems pretty unremarkable to me. I can't see any pattern per species depth that's really coming out. Still ongoing, but uh, there's also another question this uh, rose is, what's the age structure here? Are these uh, Tom Tate eggs at the surface the same age as uh, these at the bottom? We need to stage the embryos so we can tell, we can use the embryo stage as a, like a proxy of how long this has been in the water. They divide from one to two to four, and it takes time to do that. Problem, uh, fresh eggs, you can't really see much. Here's a fresh egg, we'll diagram one. After you preserve them, they kind of die and start to become more visible. I have a four-celled egg here, just for example. The problem uh, here lies in the preservative that we use. Formalin is great for preserving the egg in a physical state like this. You put it in formalin and 20 years later, it's going to look like this. But it doesn't play well with DNA. It lowers the success rate of DNA barcoding. Alcohol, we love alcohol. Uh, it <laughs> preserves, it plays well with DNA, but it doesn't really preserve the egg in a phys good physical state. After a few days, it becomes all jumbled and you can't really tell what the embryo was. I tried to remedy this problem uh, at sea in October by dyeing fresh eggs with some methylene blue so I could try to see the, uh, the embryo stage. I bought some cheap equipment off of Amazon to try and do that in the field, which worked, by the way. But as some of you may be thinking right now, I got a little seasick trying to do this at sea. <laughs> so kind of a little disheartened, it almost gave up hope until working on this presentation, I had kind of an aha moment. And so let me walk you through that real quick. If I die, uh, do an experiment where I die eggs, get their embryo state, uh, stage, and assuming that the dye I'm using isn't going to interfere with barcoding like formalin does, we're going to destroy this anyway and kind of 
if we homogenize that really good, perhaps we can figure out and find some relationship between the absorbance and the egg stage. And, you know, then when we come back to this, maybe we could assign some embryo life spans to each one of these. And if it showed out, this is just an example, I put a time Tate at the bottom there was older just as, oh, why would it be older? So it's just an example hypothesis. So to bring this all kind of back together, uh, egg abundances through the water column seem pretty consistent with a few anomalies, putting that in quotes, because we need to figure out what those anomalies, what's going on with those. Uh, is there a species composition? Is there age structure in there? For now, I'm going to continue barcoding the eggs that I've got and run some stats analyses when we're done. But I really, really want to uh, test out my embryo dye absorbance hypothesis soon because we've got some uh, work coming up in March that it, finding this out would be really in, uh, good for. In game for all these egg methods, uh, V is going to talk about some more egg methods later. The end game is to improve the efficiency of these methods increasing the information we get from fish eggs, hopefully automating and the process at a cost of way, increasing the usefulness of plankton, uh, planktonic fish eggs and stock assessments. Thank you.